Good morning everyone. Now we know how we breathe and we also know oxygen is used in cell during respiration to break down the food. But there is a gap. How did the oxygen reach the cells? Let us see. Remember how oxygen reaches the lungs? We breathe through our nose. So the air enters through nostril then it goes to the nasal cavity. Then it passes through pharynx. After pharynx, it has two parts, esophagus and larynx. The air goes into larynx, then goes into bronchus. The bronchus is divided into bronchioles. Have you ever wondered why people get choked if they try to talk while eating? We have already learnt about the breathing process and the path of the food in our body. Have you found anything common? From the nasal cavity, the air goes into pharynx. Now, there are two passages beginning with nearly same opening. One is for food and the other is for air. A flap-like valve called epiglottis protects the tube to the lungs and stops food from entering it. The valve is partially closed when we swallow food. If we talk during meal, it opens and food may enter the windpipe. And that's the reason why people who talk during meal might get choked. Let's come back to breathing again. The air has reached the ends of bronchioles. These are small air sacs covered with capillaries. We know these are called alveoli and the singular form is alveolus. Now the inhaled air has around 21% oxygen but the concentration of oxygen is much lesser in deoxygenated blood in the capillaries. So the oxygen from air enters the blood by diffusion process. Also the carbon dioxide in air is around 0.03% but carbon dioxide is around 4.4% in exhaled air. So carbon dioxide concentration in deoxygenated blood is higher than the carbon dioxide in air. Hence carbon dioxide diffuses into alveoli from capillaries. This diffusion is possible because both the alveolus and capillary walls are only one cell layer thick. When oxygen enters blood, it combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. On reaching the tissues, oxyhemoglobin releases oxygen and reverts back to hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide also merges with hemoglobin but most of the carbon dioxide is transported as bicarbonate dissolved in blood plasma. The cells are continuously using oxygen, so the oxygen level is very less inside the cells. Hence, the oxygen released by hemoglobin easily diffuses into the cells. This diffusion also takes place through capillaries. Oxygen cannot diffuse out of the parts of the blood vessels where walls are many layers thick. Now, oxygen has reached the cell. It would be used to break down glucose and produce energy. Well, the reaction is not that simple as we speak. It is actually a series of reactions, not just a single reaction. We shall learn about respiration in detail in our next class. Until then, bye-bye.